Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. You're watching a show called Conversations with Fred. Every week I have different people from our community talk about themselves or events or anything going on. Once a month we have a, a series called Where Are They Now? I bring in some of the favorite people of this county and we find out, hey, what are they up to since whatever they were doing that you knew them almost daily? I'm delighted to have with me my good friend and golfing partner. He puts up with my golf swing, Courtney Billups. Courtney, thank you for being here today. My pleasure. Okay, and it looks like you've already worked out a gig to play music, a guitar at a festival, right? So you're batting <laughs> a thousand, right? Okay. Uh, those of you who don't know, uh, Mr. Billups was a county commissioner. What year is Courtney? 2006-2010. Uh, okay. And, he was, and who was on the commissioner's board when, when you were on? Uh, we had a wonderful board. It was uh, uh, Paul Gunther, mm -hmm. who was the longtime county extension extension agent and is the best beef barbecue mm. guy in Queen Anne's and County one of the biggest yeah the biggest caterers in, in right. Queen Anne's County um, <clears throat> Gene Ransom who's right. head of the uh, medical society making big Maryland. bucks and doing it seems to be involved terrific, with everything uh, yeah. terrific guy and is like my kids his kids are growing you know his kid we had little kids when we were They're not little anymore are they Courtney <laughs> <clears throat> so uh, and it was Eric, Dr. Eric Ward Goss. Who's now a judge of the Orphan's Court, right? Okay. Yes. And he's still there. Okay. Yes. And uh, Carol Fernansky. Another so golfing partner. It was a wonderful, it was a wonderful, very, very thoughtful, uh, very, very thoughtful, and, and, and uh, I don't want to use the term educated, but someone had mentioned to me that this was the most educated board you had. You had more graduate County. degrees and law Everybody degrees had, and yeah, medical and, degrees. And, you know what and, to do and with it. That had never happened. And if I had a heart attack or I needed legal help, I'd just go to the commissioner's meetings. I got a doctor taking uh, care of me. I got an engineer uh, there. Well, I, I think there. that the Queen Anne's County Education Association brought it up because you just never had. That was not yeah. the milieu a, of, of Queen Anne's High County. High so IQ uh, county commissioners. And yeah. in hindsight, I looked back and it was very. Um, um, we didn't always agree, as most boards won't, mm -hmm. but uh, the level of analysis and um, thoughtfulness uh, served the folks of Queen Anne's County well, even if they didn't know it or realize it. They were taking behind care. closed. We we yes, absolutely. Courtney, what, let me let's go back. <clears throat> what got you to run when you? I mean, what were you always interested as being a trained lawyer? And I know you're involved in the legal profession. Why did you run for county commission? Was it just something that came so, out of the air, or what? So I um, I grew up in Washington D.C. Right. Grew up on all the. I did too, so I'm not holding that against yeah, you. Yeah. Okay? Okay. So okay. grew up on all the political talk shows, okay. a Gronskin Company, sure. McLaughlin, WTOP, Meet the so Press, okay. all that okay. stuff. And as a little kid, other kids were looking looking to cartoons or something. I was always fascinated by the political... Wonderful it, 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 atmosphere. Just, just one, and my father, you know, watched the stuff. He wasn't political. And Tom, while you mentioned, uh, give us a little background. I mean, I'm, every time I'm amazed at what your dad was doing, you, you just reminded me your mom was teaching. What was your dad doing? And all my, my, my dad was the third board-certified veterinary pathologist in the country, African-American mm -hmm. veterinary okay. pathologist in the country. He spent his last years teaching at... Uh, uh, Tuskegee University. Was he That's military cool. coordinator? Uh, my dad uh, uh, was a decorated uh, Vietnam veteran, uh, Bronze Star, um, retired a full bird colonel. Um, he went to Vietnam, I think, three days after I was born. Are you kidding me? Yeah, they gave they, you a hug and a kiss and took off they, for a uh, year. They, they, they let him stay long enough for <laughs> See you his born. son to been okay. son to be born. That was 1968. Okay. So both my brother and I were born at Walter Reed. Okay. Uh, and I know grew it up, well. I, I, I literally grew up at Walter Reed, and folks say about my football career, um, I grew up racing wheelchairs at Walter <laughs> Down Reed. The hallways. Those lo hallways. I was a little kid. Okay. And uh, but that being said, my father um, passed away in 2009. I think it was my third year's uh, county commission. It was part of the reason why I didn't run again. Uh, 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 colon cancer, uh, but. You know, what an amazing, amazing man. And okay. I said, you know, my grandfather was always my hero. An amazing guy, always my hero. And I said... And tell me about your grandfather. Uh, so my grandfather was born in North Alabama. Okay. His wife died, his parents died. He had a little girl that died, and he had my mom. And he had six little brothers and sisters he had to take care of. Oh, wow. He... He was went, the oldest? 
Yes. Okay. And, and it, so he went to Cleveland, came back with a car, got a place in the projects up in Cleveland. Okay. And it was during the Great Migration. Right. From Everyone was leaving the South and going to the industrial and, North and Northeast. And he took his six little brothers and sisters and his little baby girl and a shoebox full of chicken, and they went to Cleveland. You're kidding me. Cleveland, Ohio. And, and my grandfather couldn't read or write. Uh, couldn't read or write, but he made sure that my that his kids all went to school. Or and siblings, his little went to siblings school. and his little son. My mother, so his, my my grandfather couldn't read or what write. What was his name? Was, was he a uh, Courtney? Lee Gurley, Lee Thaniel Gurley. Gurley, okay. My son is Elijah Lee Billups. Oh, very good at that. But, but, okay. um, but what's so funny, my dad, my grandfather could, and he was my hero. I used to spend like a month in the summertime. Okay. Up in with Cleveland? In Cleveland, what, okay. yeah. And it was, um, you know, we did landscape and plumbing. He, he did it he all. He could do it all. Know. And I was, you know, I was wingman, you know, and I was just a little kid. And I was just in awe of this guy. He was like Wyatt. He knew everything. He was like Wyatt Earp. He didn't, he didn't talk a lot. Okay. He didn't say a lot. Old but, school, old school. But I said, you know, he couldn't read or write. My mother is the first African-American to get a PhD in a foreign language at the University of Maryland. So we went from a father who couldn't read or write, handyman, to a daughter who all of a sudden gets a PhD, a PhD at the University a, of Maryland. In a, in a, a foreign, foreign language. language. Mm. And she taught French and, Lang French and Latin for 35 years Amazing. in public schools. Now, how did his other siblings turn out, can I ask? I mean, uh, you, <clears throat> well, so... Right, come on, been, this is the show. We brag on the show all they the all time. Finish, they all finish high school, and Excellent. they all got a job with General Motors. Oh, wow. Is that what he... Okay, all right. Be, be, because Cleveland and General Motors... For a lot of African Americans, it was a ticket. Right? It was a it, it was a good job. Yes. My dad's side of the family is from uh, the Tidewater area. Okay. My dad's from Newport News. My family's from Hampton, Norfolk. And if you could get a job in the shipyards, you had a man. That was a good job. Yeah. They usually union jobs. Abs and the they, money was outstanding, right? For African Americans, and you really treated decently. Yeah. And and look, and and if you're if you were female. You know, was my grandmother was a nurse, my other grandmother was a nurse, my mom was a teacher. If you were African American female, either you're going to clean houses, or you're going to be limited, weren't they? You're going to be a teacher mm -hmm. or a nurse. Yeah. Those are good jobs yes, for African back in that day. Yeah. You know, I'm very fortunate. I look at my kids. I mean, my kids went to the finest. You know, yeah. or the finest you private you colleges. Got, you got one at Williams College. I got one at Williams. The other one graduated from Swarthmore. And I just go. Hey, Drop my, a couple names on me here. And right? so, so my, <laughs> my, my my mom said, "Well, you went to Morehouse." So in terms of politics, not only was I kind of, I came up in that milieu. I went to Morehouse College. Sure. Dr. King, uh, uh, Maynard Jackson, Harvard of the Andrew South. Young. Okay. We, we, we refer to it as the Black Harvard. Yes, yes. And these kids were brilliant from all over, the, and it was all black. Man. The best black minds at that time I, were there. I, and I, yes. I, it was amazed to me. Uh, Warnock, the okay. senator from Georgia, okay, he was a year behind me at Morehouse. You're kidding me. You know, and I look at the, and, and I realize, I, and I remember when I got there, I had never seen black men that were. Excelled like that. Year. Excel, and, and not only that, a lot of them came from uh, Ennis Cosby. First was a generation. year behind me. The, yeah. these, these people were not working class mm. or tobacco picking or cotton these were people of stature okay. and i had never seen that or been exposed to that i mean as Different far as world. i knew everybody mm. black was poor <laughs> okay. you know okay let me interject here one thing uh, grandfather great story did football get you to more explain to me i know you tell me about your football career so i went to, it was good it was a good i, I went to the one of the most stories programs in Maryland history, Seneca Valley. Every year state champion. And and that yeah. was, you know, that that's what I knew. And in what position? I was a running back. Okay. And full back, half back, speed by, or uh, power guy? Every, every, they just right? gave me the Give ball. Give him the ball, Give get the five ball. yards. Okay. <laughs> I called John him Riggins, okay. So I joke around I said, you know, in college, uh, Barry Wagner had the most receptions my senior year, he's the all-time leading receiver and score for the Arena Football League. Right. And, you know, I don't believe in arena football, flag football. I'm a purist. Sure. I don't like Astro. You like 100 yards and you want goalposts. And, 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 and number two was Shannon Sharp. Really? The Hall of Famer. Hall of Famer. ESPN, yeah. Number three. And, matter of fact, Barry Wagner broke uh, John Stallworth's record at Alabama A&M. Okay. 
right. Number three, I still have this thing, was Courtney Billups. Are you kidding me? Courtney you Billups. got a certificate or what they? I got I, the press release they okay. did that week, and, and but I, I said, say, I was, <clears throat> I was never that big or that fast or this, that, and the other. A lot of heart, a lot of heart. Well, I maximized my potential. Okay. I trained very hard. I worked very hard. Who was hard. the coach at Moorhead? Who was the coach in those days? It, at Moorhead. Oh, good. Morehouse, we're, we're, we're the high school. Morehouse? Yeah, no, both, uh, both. The legendary Al Thomas. Okay, okay. He passed away a few years ago. Coach Gray uh, knew him. Legendary, okay. legendary coach. This man knew X's and we did. We didn't get along at all. And so. But what we did agree on was the love of the football. The game, okay. My father uh, respects a guy, and I spoke to him two weeks ago, the first time in years, uh, Adam McKee. He was a long time, spent 40 years at NIH. Mm. Uh, retired from the military, went back to NIH in a suit and tie the next day. And my father, who is one of the smartest guys I'll ever know, sure. whenever there was an issue, he'd say, call your Uncle Adam. Okay. <laughs> Get the truth. Get the truth. Uncle Adam took me to the Redskins-Cowboys game. Okay. Is this at RFK, RFK at Stadium? At RFK. Okay. And he had season tickets. And uh, he brought me there, and it was Monday Night Football. It's Redskins, oh, Cowboys, wow. and it's my senior year. That's prime time stuff. And he told me that I needed to go to Morehouse. Okay. And I had like nine scholarship offers from Division One schools, University of Maryland, and other. And I was like, Morehouse? Do they even have a football team? <laughs> okay. But what I realized now that I didn't know then, that wasn't the point. You need to go to Morehouse. Okay. You need to go to more. You need that environment. You, you need that you need Harvard of the South environment. Because right? at, 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 at these D1 schools that give you scholarship, you'll, no. you'll, you're just a you'll flunk, you, none of that, you'll flunk out. They don't care about you. <laughs> no. You know, you're just there for football. And uh, it was like doing so going to a school like Morehouse and my classmates were these. And so that being said, I did my first uh, uh, city council campaign, was my first campaign that I managed. Okay. I was a junior, it was after my junior year in college. In college. So I was like 19 so you, years old. So you were dabbling in politics and, and I, okay. So I've, I've always, and, and uh, so um, 20 some odd years ago, I said, you know, we're living in D.C. And I said, you know, I want to find a place in the country. Okay. And just get away you're from. Practicing law in D.C. and then? Or yeah, okay. yeah. And, I, and, and I, I just wanted to get away. Okay. I just wanted some, I knew there had to get be out something of the city. else. Okay. Something else. And we looked for a year and a half. We were in the eastern panhandle of West Virginia for like a year and a half. And I said, the eastern shore? Where is that? Where is that? I'm sure, <laughs> well, you, don't, uh, you go to Ocean City, you go to the beach. And your dad was in Norfolk, though, right? It, yeah. Newport News. Newport News, okay. But I didn't know anything about it. And so we looked over here, and I found a beautiful 15 acres in the country. Okay. And the a little bit of heaven on the shore, right? And it's still, and it's still heaven. Now, so now were you practicing law and living over here? Or, yeah, you know? I you know before COVID and before tell, I mean I did a lot of work from home. Okay. You know, 15, 20 years ago, you know I was working from home a, a good deal. Now it's everybody's everybody's doing, doing it. Okay. You know, um, but I let did me just that. go back to before we go your politics. Tell me what a young black American, and what years were you at Morehead? Uh, 1986 to 1990. What was it like? I mean, you said, obviously it was a, a, an awakening moment for you, right? All of a sudden, I and mean, what was it? What were the? Cha I mean, were people political at Morehouse? Uh, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, okay. you know, you, you you you're going to school with judges' kids and politicians' kids, and you know, it, okay. it's the you know, it's the top. These shelf. are the leading minds of people all of a sudden on campus. Right, and for me, I kind of felt like a little bit of an outsider. I came okay. from a great family, well, as I County, told you. Right? Yeah. And I came from a great family, but I, I felt like I wasn't. Okay, this I was is a different more level. down. I was more pedestrian. Okay. So, so I didn't necessarily fit in or want want to fit in, um, but. Um, you know, it was it, it was it was life changing. Was for there me. a big growing experience? I mean, you really grew. Yeah. Well, because uh, because I realized if I'd have gone to some of the other Penn schools, State. gave me a scholarship. Third third running back at Penn run State. Run the football. Yeah, that's right. Run the football. By the at, way, I want to go to class. No, run the football. At Morehouse, they expected you to be great. Okay. On and off the field. They expected you to be great. They expect you to be leader, and the uh, it was just a whole different. Um, it was different than what I experienced growing up. Okay. What I experienced growing up was, oh, you're a black guy. 
even from black, but you're a black guy. Okay. At Morehouse, it was no. you, you have to be great. You're supposed to be great, and you will be great. And if you're not, you're a failure, and you disgrace this institution. I mean, that was that really... That was the attitude. The, that was really... And, and it's like Howard University, right? Same attitude, right? Yeah, and I, and I said... The vice president of the United States being told by the time she's a freshman, you can be the vice president because you're as smart and work as hard as anybody in the world. And you were being told that at Morehouse, obviously. Oh, I, yeah, I mean, it, it just... It, you know, it was, it was a completely different... You had an experience. Environment my, that I'd never, never seen. And my parents had to work hard and struggle and put up with a segregated society and racism. But, uh, you know, for me, it was the sky's the limit. And we, we, we've always had this joke in the, the black community, when your parents tell you you can be anything you want, we was, well, you can't be president. <laughs> that, that's, that, that that's was the, the joke you grew up with. Yeah, that's yeah. the joke you grew up with. Yeah. And then my son, for the first eight years of his life, wants to be president. He had a he had a black president. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. So I went from being well, you can't be president to my sure son is like, yeah, the pre you know. So it just um, it it, it um, so Morehouse was life changing for How me. How was football? Football for me. Because you didn't like you the know, coach you told. I didn't like either one of my coaches. Okay. And neither one of my coaches liked me either. Okay. <laughs> okay. But, uh, you know, in, in, in high school, the one thing I appreciated about my coach was he was Vince Lombardi. Oh, well. He, old he, school. Old he, school. He, he knew the game. So we respect each other on that right. level. He didn't like the fact that I was smart. Okay. If I was dumb and just ran the football, you would have fit in. He'd have been fine. <laughs> but the fact that I was smart and you were asking questions. And I was going to college, you know, it just, you know, uh, but uh, uh, that was amazing. My uh, college coach, and I think with Stummy when I got to Morehouse, I figured I wouldn't have to deal with that nonsense because I was with African Americans. Mm -hmm. Come to find out, it doesn't matter what color you are. Same game, same with same. Idiots are idiots, yeah. no matter what shape, sizes, or I color. Had, I had a high school football coach say to me, I don't want my players to think. I just wanted to run the ball, throw a block, make a tackle. I don't want to think. Uh, so so the, 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 the two things that they had in common, my high school coach was a great coach. My college coach was literally, uh, and I'll say it, literally one of the worst college okay. coaches ever. <laughs> just the worst. He was terrible. He yeah. was terrible. And, you know, after 20, 30 years of coaching, he was still terrible. He didn't learn anything. Okay. Uh, but what I realized about both of them is neither one of them wanted me to be a superstar. Okay. Yeah, to fit in the system, fit in their system. But I realize on third and three, on fourth and one, everybody knew who was getting the ball. Who got the ball? That was you, right? The folks in the stands. Every, but my senior year in college, they were going. They were pointing. They're going. They're going to be able to thirty-eight here, right here, right here, thirty-eight <laughs> right here. And after, I, you know, by my senior year, I just smiled. Give me the mean, ball. Because yeah, you're right. Every everybody knows what's going to happen. I'm getting okay. the ball, so that was that was you my were good. You were my good. college story. And I had several, uh, I had two career-ending injuries. What, knees or what? Uh, 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 reconstructive sure. surgery. Okay. Sixteen years old on my before my senior year spring so this was break in high school. In high school, and then freshman year, um, uh, broke my leg and shattered my ankle, and they had to reconstruct that thing, and I wasn't going to play again. And my thing was, my parents can't afford to pay for college. You got to play. My ticket was this, and they wouldn't let me play. The doctor wouldn't, wouldn't clear me. Oh, yeah? But I remember when I finally got cleared, and I never, I never looked back. And so football for me was, you know, I knew I was never going to get drafted or play for the same thing. get your college degree. It was going to get me a college degree. And, and at the same time, as much as I cursed that in, in my past, um, I'll be honest with you, football, you know, my parents said, he loves football. He loves it. He may not like his coach. He may not like the well, injuries. He likes never, running the ball and going liked, to practice. I, I, I grew up on Walter Payton. Oh, good. Anyway, now, Corey, let me get... So, played football right to law school, or was there a break? No, I went straight to law school. Where'd you go to law school? George Washington University. Oh, GW in town. Came back okay. home and went to George Washington University and uh, also was pursuing my master's in international affairs. Oh, okay. At the Elliott School there. And um, Were you uh, thinking of... State Department type work? Or? Well, well, back then, you know, uh, you know, back then it was like I learned how to speak Spanish, right. or everything is international, international right, business. Right. Inter so, so I was, that was the future, That's you know, right. international. 
So that that's what I. But uh, George Washington University Law School was Good just from oh, okay. just. And you can like, walk to sixteen hundred Pennsylvania Ave. It, you can it was, see it, can't you? And 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 it's integrated with the federal government yes. and the professors. You're inside the Beltway. I mean, it was just, you know, it was like Morehouse. I mean, the professors, the education. It was challenging. Challenging. It, it was just, you were in, you were in. Yes, yes. You were inside. You're in D.C., you're in you law were, school, you were you're inside. looking good. And I, I was president of the Black Law Student Association. And uh, the, um, so when I graduated, I went to work for former Maryland Congressman Perrin Mitchell. Oh, really? Okay. Uh, first African American chair of the Small Business Committee, right. uh, and that's what. Oh, so got, he went right to Capitol Hill. Yeah, that's oh, what, right. that's what got me into small business. Oh, okay. All Perrin right. Mitchell, you know, chairman, and and all of a sudden my passion became for entrepreneurship, and these people that start these businesses in their garage, in their basement, with their wives, and now they've got a three to five, ten million dollar company. And it just, I, I, it was amazing. I did a it lot touched of some nerves. Right. You like that. And so two years later, I started my law practice representing small businesses. Okay. And I'm doing it to this You're day. You're still doing it. And How, it's, yeah. fant it, it's just, uh, you know, I, I say this. I've never done criminal defense, personal injury, family law, any of that stuff. I've always represented uh, entrepreneurs. And it is the greatest you job. You enjoy it. It's the greatest, uh, greatest job with the greatest people. That I can, uh, that I can, uh, that I can ever oh, good. imagine. Corey, let me jump back because I interrupt you. So well, let's go back to you've been out of law school. You were in D.C. You said, you know what? I want to come to the Eastern Shore. Once we figured out where the heck it was, okay, you got here. You're living here, working from home. I'm certain crossing the bridge a lot. What was the spark? What happened? Was there an issue? Or there are people that says, Courtney Billis wants to, you know, I want to go. So I, um, so my wife. The reason was so we were coming out on the weekends for about two years, mm -hmm. uh, my wife got an opportunity. She teaches at Washington College right. in Chestertown. And I said, there's not a lot of opportunities over here. You take that. Take it. You, you take that take gig. I can work from home. Okay. You know. And so we found this beautiful place. And my kids have grown up here and done well. Um, I, I, I've always mentored young Man. You did character counts. You were in, you were in yeah. schools so all the time. I always, yeah. I always mentored you kids, that. and I enjoyed. It. I started doing that at Morehouse. I had a foundation called AtLab, okay, and AtLab. actually, President Clinton recognized that really? after I left. And you developed the program. Yeah, basically, right. I got hey, you brilliant guys from Morehouse. We're <laughs> going to go into the housing projects. We're going to go to the boys and girls clubs. We're going to go to the schools, and you're going to show these young black men. How to be successful. You guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, and we were young. And Great I, program. When I came back home to law school, I did the same thing. And when I came to Queen Anne's County, I got involved with the school system and character counts. And I had three character counts classes when I was <laughs> county commissioner. So you're a county commissioner, you're a lawyer, and you're doing character counts, you're raising kids, you're a well, husband, you, know, you name You know, it. folks always say, I said, you know, my dirty little secret is, you know, the character counts and mentoring did more for me, sure. or as much for me, as it did for the kids. Well, I know, I believe you did it at the Canary Building. I had two two classes at Canary. I did it at Canary Building. I'm like you, and if you, excuse me for a minute, I would leave there. I don't know how the kids felt, but I felt mighty I felt darn good. That, you know, folks say, you know, I can't believe you. You put all this time in, you don't have it. And I said, you know what? It is just as, it, it is as good for me as it is for the kids that you I, win. You I, both it's win. A win. You both win. You know, I, I ran. I was at a store, Fourth of July, with, mm -hmm. with, with my son, mm -hmm. and a young man taps me on the shoulder, and he's a 24-year-old. I found out later, African American gentleman, and he says, "Commissioner Billups," he said, "You changed my life." What? And I was like, "Yeah, <laughs> who I, are you? I, I don't, I, I, I'm just, I'm here to get, I'm gonna get a fifth of whiskey, a loaf of bread, and something, yeah." And uh, and he said, "You changed my life." And I said, "And I didn't recognize him, didn't know." He said, "You were my character counts class." That's funny. And I said, "Well, uh, I said what year?" And he said, fifth grade." Oh he, no, I some. He said, "Canard," and I realized it had to be one of the two cl fifth grade classes right. I had at Canard. And interesting enough, a day or two later, I recognized okay. the kids. The name, the name and face popped. Well, I didn't know the name. Okay. He said his name and then, but but all of a sudden, I remember that 
young African American okay, kid in the in class. The class. Well, I didn't remember at the he time. He changed the life. Him. But when he said that, and, I, and he was 24 years old, and you're doing the man well. Now. And and I and I and I and I remember, you know, I remember the guy at the at the store. I did the typical court and bill thing. I said, "You're doing well," and I said, "Well, continue to do well." And I slapped him on the shoulder about three <laughs> times, and I said, "Don't disappoint me." There you go. And if things get tough for you, and you think you can't make it, you make sure you give me a call. Good, good. So you're still working there, still working. And I and I walked out, and I realized. You're, you're still doing that. You're doing all right. Uh, my dear friend George O'Donnell said to me sure. one time, you don't mentor kids like you used to. You're just mentoring your kids. There you go. Nothing wrong with that. Well, let me go back to the question. What was the spark? I mean, was there a moment where you said, I want to be a commissioner? Was there an issue? What, what, did, what made you decide well, you want to be a commissioner? Well, <clears throat> I mean, obviously with the school system, I had been involved okay. in the your in kids the county, in school, yeah, yeah. And, and in Walton County, and then Sullivansville Middle School was a big issue for me. Yes, okay. You know, the building of the new one, the, or the okay. old one. Oh, the old one. As the columns and, are and falling, the new down. one, <laughs> new one. And I just, I mean, people understood. I said, look, you know, I didn't grow up in a segregated society, right? But either all the kids have a good school, or none of the kids have well, a good that's school. A fair way. That's a you fair. You can't way. have kids that have Mattapeak. Ken Island High School. Ken Island High School. Yeah. And then in Sullivansville, you got buckets in the hallway. You have buckets <laughs> when it rains, in the hallway. Rains, gets a free you have buckets in the hallway. I mean, it's outrageous. It was outrageous. Yes. It, unacceptable. And, and that was part of the reason. But the other reason I realize now is I wasn't born and raised in Queen Anne's County. Okay. Because if I had have been born and raised in Queen Anne's County, I would have never even considered You wouldn't have run, okay. Because I, I didn't know. And when I ran, people were like, have you lost your mind? And <laughs> a lot of black folks were scared for my safety. But I didn't, you know, I, I grew up in Montgomery yeah. County. I went to Morehouse. You're I went a lawyer. To law you had confidence. I mean, yeah. this, yeah, I didn't yeah. know. But if I had have been born and raised here, I would have gone, No, I'm not touching this thing. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was not something... It was not a big deal. Yeah, something you can I, do. I, I'm prepared. It's like getting I, three yards and third down. I, I, I can I, do it. I'm prepared for this. I'm good okay. for this. But the one thing I will say now that I didn't appreciate then is uh, if you're a 70, 80-year-old African-American in Queen Anne's County, um, that was a big deal. Oh, it was a big deal. And, and I didn't, I, I didn't you're know. You became an instant role model. I, 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 I didn't know. It was yeah. a big deal. And I can remember... Uh, Elsie Lawrence, yes. who's uh, on the school Debbie board. Lawrence and Debbie Lawrence. Debbie, long time the whole, with, the, with the school system. The whole system. Dunn family. Uh, so yeah. I can remember there was an NAACP meeting at the Board of Education. Mm -hmm. And I was walking out. I remember Elsie was outside the door standing, and I was right. three steps in. And I was nervous. You know, I was, I, I didn't want to, listen, I didn't mind losing, but I didn't want to look like an idiot embarrass or myself. embarrass somebody. Yes. And, I, and, I, and I, I really choked up and I said, you know, Elsie, I just want to make my folks proud. And I'll never forget, Elsie said, we're already proud. There you go. And I said, boy, my opponent's in trouble now. <laughs> <laughs> Corey, with a couple minutes we have left, what, what's the best thing you did as a group, that group of commissioners? Besides the fact you've become a role model in the community, you're involved with character counts and the daily commissioner tasks, was there one or two things you think you guys did really well or you're particularly uh, well, proud of? Well, you know, when the, when the kids came up to play a, a sports game at, at the New Sullivan Middle School, right. you know, I remember the kids going down to Ken Island looking at Mattapeak and looking wow, at Ken Island, yeah, yeah. and all of a sudden, the kids came up to Sullivansville and they see this state-of-the-art beautiful building, s school building, renovated the park. So for me, it was Sullivansville Middle School. It was renovating all the parks. We put new, you know, I I focused on children, okay, and education. That because that at the that's end what of the you're day, most proud of. that 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 at the end of the day, that's what us as adults and leaders are supposed to do. We've got to make it. That yeah. that's it. And so yeah. that that really is what I'm. The most proudest of doing things for the young when it came to education, when it came to park, recreational facilities, everything else. You know, adults will continue to fight until the day we die sure, about sure. everything. But 
Um, I'm, I'm very proud that my board, um, even though we had disagreements, we all came together to support young people and education. Um, and also, I served as uh, the, commun uh, the, the liaison to the, um, uh, the, the aging, okay. the, the Department of Aging. Sure. And now I'm... You had the young kids and you had the aging I, I, I'm vice president of the housing authority. And you. it's mostly, you know, se senior citizens. And, you know... I'm there, Courtney. I'm there. Not being a senior, I realized that, you know, we owe the little kids every opportunity and advantage we can give them. Yes. But we also owe the people that have spent 60, 70, 80 years being great Americans. Okay. And in Queen Anne's County, I was told there are more senior citizens than there are students. That doesn't mean we take away from the students, but by golly... These folks who are at that point well, in their you know, lives. My, my mother is 80 years old and taught school for 35 years. Sweet little French teacher. Yes. And, you know, she's she's turned into Judge Judy. <laughs> I, I mean, and I, I love Judge Judy. I've been sure. watching her for 25 years. Sure. She's 75. And I realize you get to a certain age where all the nonsense. You don't put up you with don't, it anymore. You, you just, you, no. you, you don't have time for it. You call it like it is and the other. So, uh, you know, uh, my biggest accomplishment and the thing that uh, I fought for kids, I fought senior for teachers, mm -hmm. and I fought for senior citizens. And I will say this, that I never thought would be part of my bailiwick, I fought for farmers. Well, good. Family that's not a bad, bad, that's not a Those, bunch of bad groups. You know, there. my biggest base of support is county commissioner. Is your farmer. farmers. And, and, well, let me ask you, because we're about to run out of time. Sure. I apologize. We're going to get you back again. You well, can't you know, hide I, from me. I, I talk a lot. So. And, no, I want you to talk a lot. <laughs> what, Courtney Billups has got, has kids graduating from college, right? You found, I think, peace, I've noticed, over the last couple of years <laughs> and where you live and your community. We talk about concerts right around the corner. You didn't know where they're. What, in the last minute we have it, what do you see doing the next 10, 20 years? You're soon to be an empty nester quicker than you think. What would you and your wife, you have plans for as you get these gray hairs? Well, I, I think over the last few years, I've recognized the most important thing for anybody is to be happy. Okay. You know, I didn't spend a lot of my life being happy. I spent a lot of my life working. I spent a lot of my life being an angry young black man. Okay. Um, so my goal is for whatever time I have left on this planet to be happy. Be happy. And you know what? And enjoy, and enjoy the ride. Because I keep saying, I haven't, I haven't had a vacation since 2005, 16 you do. years. You do. And people are like, that's crazy. <laughs> and I said, well, you know, as soon as I get here, as soon as I get here, as soon as I get I'll, I'll do it. And I said, you know, there's only one finish line. Yeah. And we all get to it. That's right. I can guarantee you we'll we, get we, there. That's the, and you don't know when that's going to come. No. You don't know when that day is going to come. And, and so I think for me is realizing that, no, you don't say, well, in 10 years or five years. Do it now. Enjoy life yeah. that you have and enjoy, enjoy your blessings. And I will shut up on this. No, you're doing fine. I was always, um, my biggest fear when I was a little kid was dying. Okay. Not dying, but just death. Yeah, death. Funerals, the oh, whole kids thing. Oh, kids are. We're not sure what's going and, on. And I'm thinking, I, I mean, am I going to heaven? I'm going to hell? Am I going to reincarnate as an ant in Calcutta? I, I don't. <laughs> and one of my dear friends passed away down the street. And I remember walking back. And for the first time in my life, I said, you know what? The train's going to come. It is. It's coming for, for all, all of us. For all of us. And there's, 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 And I said, well, you know what? Well, maybe I can ask God for a pass. <laughs> and then I thought, well, you know, God really doesn't like you. I mean, he, 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 he you know, he tolerates you, but he's a little. He's, he tolerates he's, all of us. Uh, yeah, all, he, of us, all of us. And then I said, well, you know, Jesus is Jesus is my big brother. He's got my back. And, and I said, well, maybe he can talk to you. And so, and so God is God. Listen, the only reason why God likes you is because of His Son. Right. And I said, you know, I said, well. I said, God, maybe give me a preview. He doesn't like it. And I said, well, maybe I could go to my big brother, Jesus. Maybe he, he can give me a pass. And then I thought to myself, oh, he bought the ticket. <laughs> That's right. He was willing to he accept he, it. He, 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 he bought the ticket. So one day the train's going to come. It's going to come. So you get, you get that happy time in, please. Every day, every minute, I am trying to work Good. hard and focus on being in the moment, being present, and enjoying the journey. Good. 
Courtney, you're going to come back, right? You promise me? We, we can talk football. We can talk your kids. <laughs> we, can, we can go on forever. Look, at, you did a great job as a commissioner. I, I happen to know the teacher you taught with, uh, uh, character counts. I know you did a great job with that. You certainly were a role model, and that whole group of commissioners did a great job, okay? And you sent a message. As President Obama sent a message worldwide, I can become president. You've told the local community, you know what? You can become fill in the blank, right? Well, I, I remember when I, uh, when I, uh, you know, m my father was ill and I decided not to run again. And folks would always stop me and say, I know you're glad that you're not a county commissioner anymore. You know, I mean, everybody was like, oh my God, I couldn't imagine that job and I wouldn't want that job. And I've always said the same thing. It was a privilege. Certainly. And we hope you come back to it again. You don't have to make a commitment today. Courtney, my time is about done. Thank you. You're going to promise me you come it. back. All right. Thank you. Thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We've had former County Commissioner Courtney Billups. Uh, a lot of good stories. And your grandfather, I like too. Okay. He sounded like he was a good man. My name's Fred McNeil. My time's up. Thank you for your time. We're going to see you next time. And remember what Commissioner Billups said. Be happy.